All right, I'm back. Well, a wonderful subscriber named Bonnie said, Oh, tell us about your... Have you done a video on your paper beads? And no, I hadn't done that yet. So, let me show you what I was busy doing at, the, at camp while I was camping. This is a great, fun little hobby I picked up in the last year. And so, so easy. At the end of this, I will give you a close-up of all the beads that I've made. Let me pour them in this bowl. And I've got more than this. But these I'm particularly tickled about. And they're so much fun. I put glitter on them. They've had a couple layers of Mod Podge. And you think, well, what can I do with these? Well, I'm mostly a quilter. But I can make a necklace if I want. I can make an um, eyeglass holder out of these beads. I can make scissor fobs. I, you know, anything, little, little fobs to hang on your sewing equipment or your bags so that you can identify that, you're, that they're yours. And what I love about making paper beads is they're very cheap and they're very easy and they're mindless. So if you're watching TV, and I don't know about you, but I get bored just sitting there watching TV. I've got to keep my hands busy. And especially in summer, I don't want to sit there with crochet on my lap or working on putting the binding on a quilt where the quilt's laying all over you. So this was a very fun thing to do. And I will show you these up close before we leave, so stay tuned because I'd love you to see the patterns up close. Well, I did several different things. I used to have a crochet hook, and I rolled my paper beads on a crochet hook. That works pretty good honestly because it was a nice smooth finish metallic crochet hook and all you need is white glue you know what I mean in fact I buy this now by the gallon you can find it on sale for $12 a gallon $10 a gallon and I go through a lot of this but it's cheap it lasts forever here's a little paper plate that I can use to protect my surface. I use some inexpensive brushes. I use some Mod Podge. You know what this is. Um, I finally this time went online on my favorite eBay and I found a woman who was selling bead rollers. And these are wooden handled bead rollers that have a gap in the metal right. There's a metal tube right here that has a that has an opening. And that way you tuck the paper in and off you go rolling. So I've got all these different sizes. And these were like $9.99. But before you, it, before you invest in anything, just use your crochet hook. See if it's something you're going to like. I went to the dollar store and found these. They were like five packs of this, this tiny little packs of glitter. What fun! Perfect for it. So all this for a dollar. Pretty good. All right. Now, when I say this is a cheap hobby, I mean it. We all get catalogs in, don't we? Catalogs and catalogs and sale flyers and... And you know what I have found now? When I get a catalog in... I check the, the paper weight, uh, the weight of the paper. And some of them have slightly thicker paper, and I really like that. This one's really, really, really good one. It's a triple A fail flyer. And I like it too because it has these are long pages. They're longer than a regular catalog. And so I'll make sure to take the staples out and then cut them. Okay, so catalogs. Now, if you find pretty colors on the pages, you can make a bead, a bead with some of these colors. Wouldn't that be neat? Or greens or blues. So you can make your beads just totally out of catalogs. Try it. Start out that way if you want. Another tip you can do is go to Joann's with a coupon or when they're having their scrapbooking paper sales.
and you can get a whole sheet of scrapbook paper. Now this, these are already cut up, but they're good size sheets, 12 by 12 at least, and so they're 17 cents a piece. Now not the expensive ones, but you don't need expensive paper. And so I've just got all different kinds, and this this made the, the this blue and white made the prettiest bead. So anyway, I've got a whole bunch of these. Now, when I went camping, I took a bunch of my different color Sharpie markers and just some plain copy paper and made all kinds of patterns and designs myself just with Sharpie markers and then cut them up. And you know what? I was leaning on this because the Sharpie does go through at least one page and I said, this will make a bead when I'm done. I used this just so that the marker, if it bled through the paper, this caught it. So this is just a bleed through page. But this is going to be neat. So you can make your own designs for beads. And the more you do it, the more you'll realize what kind of drawings and what kind of graphics work the best. So, and just for any of you that are quilters that are like, this has nothing to do with quilting. Well... A quilter doesn't live by quilts alone. And usually I find quilters love all kinds of crafts. We're tactile people, you know, and we love finding things like that to do. And so far as other papers and other interesting things, look at this envelope my daughter gave me, a Mother's Day card. I looked at the gold in that envelope and said, oh, gold beads, I can make gold beads. Then with the rest of it, it's a beautiful lavender. So that's going to go into the bead making process. My husband loves Hershey's candies. Between kissies and nuggets, I get lots of these. I save them. He always says, like, you're saving those? Yes, I'm saving them. Because, and let me tell you what, right now you think, oh, well, that's not enough to make a bead. Oh, it is. Trust me. So I just take it, smooth it out. It looks like silver. It's beautiful. So I save all these things. Then, do you ever get junk mail? Some of these credit cards offer beautiful paper. Look, look, it's it's a it's hard to explain, but it's a a black satin matte kind of color. Beautiful. And I used to hate throwing that away because it's so pretty. How about this one? It is a rose gold metallic. I can use that. And if you think, well, it's not very big, it's plenty big for beads. Because let me tell you what I do. Here is an example of what I start with to make a bead. And if you'll notice, this is all magazine throwaway paper. Okay? Which is slick, so it's good because it's easier to get off the bead roller. Here is the quality paper. All you need is a couple inches. See what I did? I glued it together. So all you need is a couple inches of your good fabric and you'll have a bead. Now, that's why I cut these strips like I did. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a sheet of the catalog paper, the throwaway, and I'm going to glue this onto it. And then I'll cut my strips to make beads. So as long as you have, because think about it, when you're rolling these, you only need two inches to totally hide the scrap paper. So why not use this? It's wonderful recycling. Keeps it out of the landfill. Glue this on. And so think, a sheet of scrapbook paper for 17 cents will make four of these at least. Four to five. Then you glue it on what you normally would have just thrown away. And then you can probably get eight or ten beads out of this one thing. So, it's fun and cheap. And I am cheap. I promise you I am. So, and the way I look at it, the more money I save doing this, these kind of things, is the more money I can, I can spend on fabric. And you know what kind of fabric, too. Any buyer, but anyway, okay, so now I'll move my supplies out of the way. Oh, and I was going to show you this. This is a handy little thing 
This is my main go-to for my bead making. And I got it at Joann's with a coupon for Christmas. And as you can see, if you have it all snapped up, then you can pick, a, pick it up and off you go. But in here, in the top bin, I keep scissors, brushes, I buy beads on sale because a lot of times I'll use these as spacer beads when I make a necklace. Little jewelry findings. Boy, when they're out going clearance, I buy them. Toothpicks. Hmm, what do we use toothpicks for? I'll show you. So that's the top bin. Then, in this bin, I have bags, I have beading needles, I have more brushes and more bamboo skewers. Bamboo skewers come in real handy. And a little sandpaper so that if I want to smooth out one of the beads, I can. Let's see what else. I also keep my bags of beads in here. And believe it or not, I even make beads out of scraps of fabric. I feel like that's really cool. If you're a quilter, you have lots of scraps. Why not turn them into beads? And there, there's a different Mod Podge for fabric. So, and this is a little bit more expensive, but the regular Mod Podge, get it on sale, it lasts forever. And this, this does pretty good too. All right, so those, I showed you my fabric. And it makes great gifts, too. Think about it. If you belong to a group or have quilting friends, these make great gifts. And in here, I have all bought on sale. I have some of the string, some more spacer beads. And I have beads left over from little projects or dollar strands from wherever I can get on sale. Here are some beads. But anyway, I, I have things I collect, like I, I have a lot of these eyeglass holders. And when the wire breaks, I reuse the beads. So I just keep extra beads in here. Here are lobster claw closures. And even some stretchy bead string. Because I don't always want to mess with a closure. So I'll make a necklace out of stretchy plastic and then I can just pull it on over this big head. So that's my case. I keep all of my paper supplies in baggies because that way they don't get sticky or messed up. But I even have some cute papers. I found papers with doggy footprints. I mean, you know, so there's just all kinds of different ideas. So now I've shown you my case. Then I also have a bag that I keep all my papers in. And I'm experimenting with using papers that are embossed. They're a little tougher, so I wouldn't start with those first. All right, so I use scissors to cut my strips or I use my paper cutter. One thing I'd like to get, in fact, for next Christmas, if I keep liking making paper beads, is I'd like to get a what do you call it? What is it you call when when you when you uh, um when someone has their head cut and it's a French word? Hmm. Anyway. I would like to end up getting one that has the arm that cuts down, that comes down and cuts the paper, and that way this it becomes more a little more difficult because I have to be careful to slide the paper in, and it's hard when you want to make long, you know, cuts. But still, this was $9.99, so but I do have that. All right, so here at while I was camping, I made a bunch of. The strips and this is magazine strips with the pretty paper on the end and I don't see I was looking to see if there was one that some of the papers that I made but I think I already made all the one the pretty paper I made is already made into beads and here's one of my beads that I made so here's another one 
So you can really make some cool, just have fun scribbling, you know? Easy. All right. So I'm going to show you a bead. Now, and there's lots of tutorials for bead making. And they have beads of all different kinds of shapes. I'm pretty much just going to write now. For this one, I might show you two kinds of beads. And this is just going to be a rectangular, just a, a round tube bead, I think they call them. So, let me get, let me get, I'm going to get a big one out of here. All right. And you know what this is. It's crystal light container. Love reusing stuff. Am I the queen of cheap or what? All right. So I get my glue ready. And when you get down, down near the end of the bottle, if you're too, you know, too busy, yeah, not lazy, busy, to go refill it, set it up, up in a cup. Something especially disposable. Just set it like that, and it'll keep the glue down near the bottom. So open up my glue. And you take, here's the pretty paper. I'm using this because it's red. And you take... And the just the magazine page end and I think I need to put my second eyes on here pardon me just a second all right so you slip you slip this paper in that opening of the metal bar and what I do is I don't put any glue on yet because if you put glue here it is liable to want to stick to this bar. If I were to tell this company how to improve them, and they probably are better on a little more expensive um, bead rollers, I would say make it a non-stick finish so it's easy to get the bead off. But I've rolled up a couple rolls on here. See? See how you do it? And then I come and I take glue and put it on there. And you notice the pretty paper is facing down. See, it's under here. And you just take this glue. Now you can take your finger, run it along, spread it out. And you just take and roll and roll and roll. And the, the, only, the only improvement that this has over a crochet hook is you can tuck the paper in that slit and it holds the paper better. But you can, like I say... And in fact, I've got these little jelly things on here for my hand. You can put those on crochet hooks too. So now I'm getting near. I'm getting near the pretty paper. And I noticed it's got a little area where it's sticking up. So I'm going to put a little more glue on it. And so there's glue along this paper. Now some people... Don't glue them until the very end. And I, I, I think that's false economy. Let me tell you why. Because this glue sets up very quickly. And if you only have glue at the end, when you go to pull this off, that paper is going to want to like open up. There's nothing to hold the inner winds together. And I'm sorry, glue is so cheap. Go ahead and use the glue. Then, how do I let these dry? Because they do have to dry before you Mod Podge them. What I do is I took this, came in a packing box, and I thought, oh, I can use that. And then I took toothpicks. That's why I had the toothpicks. And so then I put these on here, and this holds it while I keep making the beads. And when it comes time to put Mod Podge on, I take this is where the skewers come in. I put it on a skewer. And then I paint. Oh, just one quick thing. It's good if you can stick some Mod Podge a little bit down in the holes of the beads. And, um, and then that way, when you put them on the skewer, the holes are done. And now you just Mod Podge this and carefully put it on the drying rack. And I usually do two to three light coats of Mod Podge and you want to let it cure really good and even with that maybe some of you know but the beads will kind of stick to each other but then it's very easy to just kind of pop them apart 
So this, this bowl will kind of get stiff and then it's fun to run your fingers through and break them apart. It's very tactile. Very, very tactile. All right. So now that was just a regular rectangular bead. Let's try something a little more exciting. All right. So here is the pretty paper. It's brown and it looks like a cork board. All right. You take the wide end and put it in your roller like this. Okay. You roll a couple rolls. Do it a couple times around the roller. Then you run your little thin glue down the paper. And I like to take and smooth it in because that way you know you're sufficiently covered. And what you do is you just carefully roll it, keeping it centered. So this is a tapered bead and you need to keep it centered so it's even on, there's an even taper on both sides then this color goes on at the very end. So when I do a tapered bead with with pretty fabric only at the end, I make sure that the rest of the page is something that goes with it. If not, tapered beads, might you might want to use the pretty paper all the way down. So now I'm going to move the camera in, do a couple more so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, let me get, I'll get this pretty paper. This pretty, and this is just going to be a regular tube bead. Bugle bead, whatever they call them, I think. All right, and I find the slit. Let me see if I can show you this. There's a little slit right there. There you go, you can see it. A little slit right there in it. And so, with the pretty paper down, I put the paper in the slit like this, like this, and I roll it. And once I've rolled it up a couple times, then it's pretty good. Then I take my glue and I put glue down the piece of paper. Then I take my finger usually and rub it back and forth to kind of spread it to the edges. Alright. And another thing, well, and then I just start rolling. Another thing to tell you is don't leave it on this roller very long. Because if any glue is on the roller between the roller and the paper, especially using such a thin magazine paper, it will glue the paper to the roller pen. And you'll have a mess of a time getting it off. I can't tell you how many beads I had, especially when I was outside working and it was breezy. The beads would dry on the roller and I had to kind of rip them off. But there we go. Look at this. Isn't that a pretty bead? It kind of looks like a porcelain bead. Very pretty. Make sure the edge of the paper is firmly down. Then I take and put it on my bead stand. And here is a close-up of the beads on my bead stand. Okay. Now, let's see. What can I do? Here is, this will be a slightly tapered bead. And my son and his wife are professional musicians, so these beads are going to come in handy for them. So once again, I find the slit in this metal tube. And I slip the paper in. Whoops. Slip the paper in. Okay. And then I roll it. Then I stop. I put glue all the way down. Just a little thin. When they're thin like this, they just need a little thin line of glue. Alright. So then I take my finger and I run it down a couple of times to spread the glue out. Then quickly start rolling. Remember, you don't want to, don't put this down and go answer the phone. <laughs> because once your glue dries on this, on the rod here, you may be having to rip it off. And it'll mess up your bead totally. Okay, so you just try to, this only has a small taper, so I just try to keep it. Can't really tell, but it is in the center of that taper. 
So this is nice because it kind of gives a nice rounded edge to this little bead. There you go. And you, any leftover glue on your fingers, just run it on the bead like that. Just rub it off on the bead. Then take your fingernails and grab the bead to pull it off. Because, see right there, a little bit of that paper wanted to come out. That's why I tell you, you got to kind of work, you know, not too fast, but you have to, you have to keep moving with this. And when you go to put the Mod Podge on them, um, don't let it sit too long on your skewer. Mod Podge it and then get it on the get it on this to dry. All right. Now, if you were to want to, you could always varnish this. You could varnish your toothpicks, and you could even varnish that. And who knows? At some point, I might do that. And that'll just make it easier to come off. Alright, let me find another one. Oh, this is cute. Isn't that cute? So, let's see. I think what I'm going to do is I want a real tapered bead with this. And so let me... Let me taper, let me taper this even more. So I put it... I put it in my cutter. Let me get it put in here. And what I'm trying to do is put it in the cutter so it will be at an angle so it'll get smaller towards the end. So then I take this side and make it a little wider. So I'm going to go wide up here and go narrower down to the pretty fabric. I hold this down firmly and then cut my way up. Let's see what I got. Okay, here we are. Wow, this came out very thin. Well, let's see what that ends up looking like. The paper's mostly white. Let's see what happens. Alright. Here is my bead roller, and I put the wide end in the slit, roll it a couple rolls, then get my Elmer's glue, and run it down the paper. You get better at this as you've been doing it longer, and then you just spread it out with your fingers, and you start rolling. And with the tapered bead, I see that you have to, you don't have much time to work and you don't want to keep pulling it back because at some point it'll start ripping. But try to keep the tapered bead centered so that you've got the same amount. See how it goes, it gets smaller towards each side? So if you keep it centered good, then you should get down to the end and have a really pretty tapered little bead. And with the flowers on the very end of this, I think it'll be right cute. And there it is. Let me get that laying down. Take the excess on your fingers, rub on it. Then take your fingernails and grab at the end and slide it off. And there it is. Pretty simple, huh? Okay. So there, now in just the last few minutes, those are the beads I've made. Now, these aren't really dry, but this one's almost dry. That's, that's the good thing about, you know, the, this white glue, is it doesn't take it long to dry. But, since it's all through all these layers, I usually let it dry overnight. Then the next day, I'll put the Mod Podge. One more thing I wanted to show you, which I like to do, is on the end of the bead, I like to take a permanent marker and color the bead either the same or contrasting color. As the bead. So see how it is red rather than the white. So I'll do the same on this end. And it just gives it a nice finished edge. Now most of the beads I will 
use a black permanent marker and mark each end. But you can use black, white, whatever color you want. Oh, then after you mark them, now if you forget to color the end of the bead to hide the white paper, you can always do it after you've put a layer, one, the first layer of Mod Podge. You can color it on and then, and I usually stick a little bit in the middle, and it just keeps it from looking like paper. Because trust me, when these things are done, you would have no idea that they're paper. Now, here I'm going to put the first coat of this on. And what I'm going to do, remember, never leave your Mod Podge open. It dries pretty fast. But I have put some on this brush. Then I take my Mod Podge and put it in the bead. Because you want to protect that edge of the paper where it's going to be rubbing against the string or cord that you're going to string it on eventually. Then, now that I've put the Mod Podge in each, in each end, then I just come here like this and paint Mod Podge all over the bead. When I Mod Podge, boy, my hands get sticky. But it's kind of fun, you know, because then I let the, the glue and the Mod Podge dry and then peel it off. Remember doing that in school as a kid? So there it is. And it'll get a shine. Look at that shine already. Let me see if I can get the light to catch it. See? And then I'll let this dry overnight. Then tomorrow I'll do another coat. And if I need it, then I'll do another coat. And I wash the Mod Podge off my brushes right away. So, you just do a couple coats of Mod Podge and then you are ready to make it into whatever you would like. Okay, I told you I would do a close-up of the beads. So let me show you what I've got. Remember the red one I just made a minute ago? And that has some glitter on it too. What I did is when I put my last coat of Mod Podge, well, next to the last coat of Mod Podge, I then put the glitter on, then did one more coat of Mod Podge so it would be stuck on. Here's some of the paper I made, just kind of a random drawing. Here's just some flowered ones. Here's another one that I did. I just did flowers on a sheet of paper. And here's another one that I did, just lines and colors and fabric. This, let me see if I can find a bigger one of this. Let me move my stuff out of the way. Okay. I found some awesome paper. This is scrapbooking paper, and it's water, water dots, little dots of water. And it made really awesome beads. Then I found some four-leaf clover paper. Here is some more paper that I made. I thought it was a good graphic design. Let's see. Oh, here are the musical notes, I was, beads I was telling you about. And see how I colored each end black. So, and I'm pressing on it. It does not collapse. It is a hard little bead. Here's a tapered bead of paper that I made. This time I painted the ends blue. Well, that end I did. <laughs> um, yeah, some more pa paper that I had made. And you can just remember, what don't worry about drawing this profound design. Because by the time you cut it and roll it up. Here, this was a piece of mail that I had gotten in and rolled that up. Here are some little black beads that I made. Trying to see what else might interest you. And here's pretty just, just... Now one thing to remember about the glitter is it doesn't always shine, especially when covered with Mod Podge. It has, the light has to hit it just right. So. Be careful if you don't, you know, if you have a paper that's delicate, you might not want to put the glitter on it. Here's another tapered bead from um, fab, uh, paper that I made. I don't, if I've been saying fabric, I'm sorry. But um, I think these came out really well. And just, you know, simple, simple, simple designs. And uh, 
simple colors. Not everything has to be super fancy. Here's a nice long tapered bead. Uh, another red one. So I did a, a two beads I did tapered. They've got some, if you go look on YouTube, they've got some that come in and out like an hourglass. I, I haven't tried that yet. I just have fun rolling them. I have fun making something from nothing. Oh, this is this came out like beautiful rainbow. And it was just paper I colored on. So, in all different colors. There's a plaid bead. I found some plaid scrapbooking paper. So, hopefully, you can see my work. And here is, where is it? This is from some heavier embossed paper that I found. Uh, I, it, Actually, with a little bit of a touch of work, it would look like wood. I could have done a few little striations on that, and it would look like a big wood bead. Here's a smaller version of the same paper. So these, I rolled the whole paper up. But then I learned, hey, so you can save a lot of money by using stuff you'd normally just throw away, and it would sit in the landfill. So... Here's a really pretty one. Isn't that pretty? I love how the colors are all varied. So anyway, there we are. This, another envelope paper. Isn't that cool? Or no, I think, I'm sorry, this was out of a magazine. Here's another piece of the, pa of the paper that I made. So, lots of fun. Here's one of that, a bead out of that cork paper. But there they are. Hopefully you can see good. Did you hear that fall on the table? Listen, they're hard. Hear that? So they're nice, firm little beads. So there they are. And Miss Bonnie, I hope you found a new, easy, cheap little hobby. It doesn't take much. Mod Podge glue, flyers, white glue, and paper that you make or paper you buy on sale very cheaply. And, I mean, I probably didn't spend more than a couple dollars making all this. Here is one of the little candy wrapper beads. See, it's silver. Oops. Isn't that neat? And that would look real pretty between... Look at this. That would be real pretty between the music, the black and white musical instrument bead. You have a silver bead and then that, or between the bubble fabric, bubbled paper. Hope you enjoyed today's tutorial on how to turn trash into fun treasure. And I hope you'll try it. If you do, send me pictures. I'd love to know. There is, I do have my email address down in the comments. And feel free to send a picture to my email address and I'll include your picture in my next video. So, enjoy. Have fun. It's summer. We're kids at heart. So have some fun this week. Take care. Bye-bye.